2020 has been a hard and challenging year for all of us. My time in lockdown has enabled me to reflect on my experience and body of work. Over the past five years, I've shot many assignments and conducted many workshops from Europe to the USA, throughout Southeast Asia and Australia. And as I look over some of my favorite pictures, I'm reminded that for the entire journey, I've used just the one camera. I'm Christian Dowling, and this is my story. I've been very fortunate to have a career as a professional photographer, and what started on the streets of Melbourne quickly progressed to working with Getty Images, where I was covering a lot of the world's major events in news, sports, and entertainment. I then stopped off in Hollywood for a few years where I worked with some amazing clients and incredible talent, including Katy Perry. Since the age of 15, I've had a love affair with Leica, and it's been that camera that's been with me all that time. But professionally speaking, I've used mostly Canon and Nikon up until the year 2015, where I was offered an opportunity to work with Leica on their new SL program as an ambassador. And in October, Leica kindly invited me to their launch event in Wetzlar, Germany. And it was an exciting time. I mean, I got to meet some of my old friends from Los Angeles, as well as making some new friends and just participating in the overall hype and excitement of this new product launch. Now at the time, I didn't realize how significant this launch was because Really, if you think about it, it was a whole new system that was based on a platform that wasn't really tested or proven in the professional arena, and that was mirrorless. And really, at that time, 90%, at least 90% of professional photographers were using SLRs, and that was the industry standard. When I first picked up the Leica SL, I noticed the very sharp, clean, minimalistic design of the camera and it really reminded me of an Audi. I mean, it's just, it's beautiful. It's machined out of one solid piece of aluminum. And you can say that it's just the bare essentials of a camera. I mean, it's void of all these buttons that you would normally see all over a camera and specifically labels. I mean, it only has one label, which is this on and off key here. Other than that, it's just all about the form and function of the basics of a camera. So I've heard a lot of people talk about the size of the SL and how it's a little bit too big for their liking. Well, consider this. The camera basically is that big because it has a very big viewfinder at the top. And this is a 4.4 million dot viewfinder that offers extremely high resolution. And in 2015, it was much higher than the competition. And it is the starting point to which this camera is just an incredible machine to use and operate. It really makes it very precise and very efficient to use because I can see exactly what I'm getting when I'm shooting or even before I take the photo. The SL is an ambitious camera and at the time of launch, it was aimed directly at the professional market. So the one key attribute that it needs other than reliability has to be speed. Speed in terms of its focus and speed in terms of its operation and shooting. One of my very first assignments with the SL was at a Muay Thai orphanage where I was documenting some kids that live at this Muay Thai kickboxing camp and I was documenting their daily lives and their training schedule as well as their fighting. And this was a great opportunity to test the speed of the camera. Now in terms of keeping up, the camera shoots really, really well but the buffer times out a little bit quicker than what I would like. Now, if there's any Achilles heel of the camera, it's probably going to be its autofocus in terms of its continuous focusing. In terms of single shot, the autofocus is extremely snappy, fast, and doesn't hunt at all, even in low light. But when it comes to focusing on subjects moving towards or away from the camera, it does struggle a little bit. Now, keep in mind, it is a 2015 camera. And in 2015, the technology was fully contrast-based and it really wasn't very good. 2020 with the SL2, we have major improvements that basically remedy that. Now, it isn't a deal breaker, and obviously I've kept the camera and used it very successfully for the last five years, but it is something to be aware of. As a professional photographer, there's a certain level of expectation of me that is always at a high level. 
And I can't work at that high level unless I have a camera that I can trust. It needs to be reliable. So my number one key feature in any camera that I really need is reliability. I need to know that I can trust it and I need to know that it's gonna perform without any problems. The next endurance test came in Bangkok, Thailand during the Songkran New Year Water Festival. Now, for those of you that have been to Bangkok and may know a place called Nana, you'll know that it can get pretty. People were going crazy, having a great time, firing water guns everywhere, and even sliding people across the floor like bowling balls into buckets. I mean, it was crazy. And I even encountered some kids that were, got into the action and they were basically on the railway tracks um, with a makeshift swimming pool and just having a great time. And these are the moments that you cherish the most as a photographer because it's just real life. It's nothing set up. It's all life happening and unfolding in front of you. Now, from there, I went over to a place called Silom. And at Silom, I discovered a very large boy who had made himself a very hard to miss target of a barrage of water pistol fire and water was flying everywhere. And I mean, he even got two female bodyguards to come up with him and it was just crazy and they were protecting him and it was just a really fun experience. And all of that wouldn't be possible if I had to worry about the camera. And I mean, the weather sealing of the camera obviously works really, really well. And I've got to say, I've shot with it many times in many extreme situations since then, and I've never, ever, ever had a problem. One of my favorite watches and clients is Oris Watches. And other than shooting product images for them, I was covering an event at the Avalon Air Show in Melbourne. And it was at this event where I was shooting the silhouettes of planes across the sun, and it was spectacular. I mean, the images that were coming from the 90 to 280 SL lens I was using were unlike any kind of images I've seen from a zoom lens. I mean, zoom lenses typically have a lot of elements in quite a few groups, and that basically introduces more opportunity for lens flare and lens reflections. And there were none. I mean, the camera shot directly into the sun with spectacular results that had a lot of contrast, plenty of sharpness, and just kind of this look that I'd never seen from a 35mm format camera. My portfolio consists of a lot of genres, and I like kind of being this all-round photographer, and the SL really lends itself so well into many different situations, but I have to say, probably a majority of the work that I do is in portraiture. And with portraiture, I need great color signs. I need great skin tones out of camera, and that's what the SL does give me. And it's probably the number one attribute of the camera that appeals to me the most. Its color science is incredible. And where Canon might lean towards more oranges and pinks, and Nikon and Sigma, and say, for example, Sony lean towards more yellow and green, the Leica is a lot more neutral in the middle. I'm not going to say it's perfect, and I won't say it's better than the other cameras, but it's where I like it to be out of camera. And it's a great foundation for post-processing. It basically means that there's less color correction for me to do. And I just love the way that it looks. I mean, all different types of skin tones in all different lighting situations really come out just the way I like it. Now that's quite an accomplishment for Leica because following from their Leica M9, which featured a CCD sensor that everyone loved, people were a little bit skeptical after that when they released the M240. So, with this new sensor in the SL, I was very much relieved to see that the sensor delivers exceptional color quality. And that translates even over that five year period to today. I'm still ecstatic with the colors and I'm always excited to see what it looks like when they come out. Add on top of that a 13 stop dynamic range, which by today's standards is still very, very good and very robust files that have the ability to open up shadows and retrieve highlights there's really no stopping the image quality from looking spectacular. Now, having said that, the black and white monochrome out of this camera is incredible. I absolutely love converting the images to black and white. I mean, to be honest, I actually shoot with the camera in black and white. So what I'm seeing through that EVF 
is a black and white image. And why I do that is because I want to avoid the distraction of color. And I want to focus a lot more on contrast, on composition, and light and exposure. And that's what shooting in black and white does. It puts my frame of mind into that mode. So when I do get my images back and I get these beautiful colors, I'm often confronted with the choice of having to decide whether or not I want to keep it in color or convert it to black and white, which I originally shot it that way with. So it's a choice I'm always having to deal with. But luckily, the beautiful tonality of the dynamic range of the color files allows a lot of leeway when you're moving those color sliders in Lightroom. And I just love the overall effect of the monochrome imagery that comes from the SL. As a photographic coach and instructor, I conduct three key workshops as part of my curriculum. They are central portraiture, cinematic portraiture, and mastering low light. And now while all three subgenres sort of sound a little bit different, they do share a lot of common goals and successes. They all share a cinematic style of lighting that I use in my work. Focusing on all kinds of light, whether it be hard or soft, and using shadows to define the mood, tone, and atmosphere in the image is imperative. I do this with natural or artificial LED lights, and sometimes a combination. Whether I'm shooting an intimate moment of a couple or the birth of a child, the drawing of light and shadows is a key component of this storytelling technique. And whether I'm using lighting or not, my goal is always simple. Keep it natural. So there was a workshop in Thailand late last year where I was photographing and directing a key moment between a couple that was very intimate. Now, this isn't easy, but when you direct it to be more of a moment instead of a picture, the mood and feeling changes completely. And by utilizing combining natural lighting techniques, it really goes a long way to emphasize the mood. And this is really important to making it believable and making it dramatic. A majority of the work that I do is in low light, and a lot of that is by choice. Now, another choice I make is to put the ISO up, and I work generally for anywhere from 1600 to 12,500 ISO. Now, that's where a lot of people are afraid to go. And, you know, we're afraid of it because the image quality does take a little bit of a hit, or the perceived image quality, because in reality, the actual image quality isn't all just about the way that the noise looks. And one real benefit of the noise characteristics of the SL is that it actually looks really, really good. There's very little color noise up until 12,500 ISO. There's great dynamic range and color accuracy up until that ISO as well. And it does look, I won't say film-like, it's very, very clean. Um, and when we add extra noise reduction in Lightroom, it doesn't take away a lot of the detail that normally you would associate with reducing noise. Because the lenses are so sharp, um, it basically gets it to a very nice level where it's not overly sharp and the images look brilliantly clean. And that's basically due to the fact that it has a very low, what I call low noise floor overall. And even in 2020, um, it's still very, very good. In 2015, it was incredible. Um, but it's amazing that even today, it still holds its ground. Now, when it comes to video, the SL is not a dedicated cine camera, but it does a great job as a very good 4K and slow motion 120 frames per second full HD camera, combining Leica's high resolution lenses with the excellent and accurate color science the imagery from the SL in slow motion is silky smooth and beautiful to watch. Now, while the specs in 2020 are a little bit dated, I can tell you that the overall video quality of the SL is quite exceptional, and I had a lot of fun using it.
Now, when it comes to lenses, I'm really happy to say that we now have 35 L mount native lenses in the system of the L mount Alliance. Now, that's a lot more than the two initially released with the camera in 2015. Having said that, the L mount Alliance is a great initiative. And basically, what it does is it combines the information, technology, and experience of Leica, Sigma, and Panasonic to produce a much more extensive and comprehensive system for their users. Now, for those of you looking to get into the SL system at a lower budget, the Sigma and Panasonic line offers a value proposition that is astounding. I mean, the quality of their lenses, especially the Sigma art lenses, are just incredible. I mean, I have the 70mm macro myself, and it is phenomenal. So when it comes to the Leica SL mount lenses, no words can truly describe how great they are. I will probably put it this way. They are possibly Leica's best ever lenses. Now, I would even go as far as to say that the 35mm Summicron might be Leica's best lens that they've ever made. It's that good. I mean, these Apo corrected fixed lenses are phenomenal on the SL. And to add on that, they're excellent value on their own because they're comparatively cheaper than the M counterparts. And this makes for a really great value proposition on a camera body that can literally do anything with autofocus lenses that are bridging the gap between 35mm quality and medium format. I mean, they're truly that great, as well as the fact that they're future-proofed against much larger sensor outputs that come, well, in the future. The Leica SL has been an extremely reliable camera. Now, other than the occasional freeze and battery pull, there's been no need for any kind of service and it's never stopped working. It's continued to work like a strong workhorse that it should be during this time. And to be honest, it's kind of surprising for a first generation camera. I mean, most first generation cameras have a lot of issues. And even in 2020, we're seeing a lot of cameras that are having these kinds of issues with overheating and freezing. Whether I'm shooting publicity shots, portraits, action, commercial, product, the SL has always lived up to my expectations. I mean, the SL2 is the natural upgrade for the SL, and it does do everything that the SL does better, and it even fixes some of the issues I had with the original SL. Well, I would like image stabilization. I would like faster focusing in continuous. I would like better video, but I don't need the extra megapixels, and I can live without the other things for the time being, and as long as the SL continues to tick, I'm gonna continue using it. You know, I'm often asked the question, Christian, what camera do you use? Almost like they want to attribute the success of my work to the model or the brand of the camera that I have. And maybe that's because I own a Leica and I deserve it. But either way, there's one thing that I do know. A camera doesn't make you any better. It does provide more capability for you and it gives you maybe more potential, but that potential cannot be realized without you putting in that work. And a photographer or a creator, really, we're only as good as the opportunities we create. So if I'm to leave you with any final advice, it's not necessarily to go out and buy the camera. You'll know by now whether the camera is for you or it's not for you. But no matter what camera you have, pick it up, go out, create that opportunity, and make something truly amazing. Well, thank you very much for making it to the end of this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments below and hit that subscribe button because I have a lot more great content coming your way and we'll see you in the next video.